Welcome to the National Commission for the Certification of Crane Operators Tower Crane Operator Practical Exam. If there is anything in this video you do not understand, please request clarification from the practical examiner. The NCCCO Tower Crane Operator Practical Exam consists of the following tasks. There is also a pre-test briefing, a pre-test familiarization period, and pre-task familiarization period prior to task 2. Before taking the exam, you will be informed of the make and model of the crane, the jib length, and the weight of the test weight. While you wait for your opportunity to test, you will be provided sufficient time to read the descriptions of the tasks you need to perform and to review the operator's manual and load charts for the crane you will be operating. If the crane is equipped with an LMI, it has been programmed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions and is functioning properly. The crane you will operate has been set up and leveled prior to testing. No part of the course has been placed at a radius that exceeds the crane's rated capacity. For self-erecting tower cranes, the jib length has been preset. The test site coordinator is responsible for setting the test schedule for the day. Once you've completed all your tests, you must leave the test area. If you wish to retest, you will be required to re-register and pay the test fees again. The only personnel allowed in the test area are those who are actively involved in the administration of the practical exam. You are under the supervision of the practical examiner and must follow their instructions and signals at all times. The examiner has the authority to stop the test if you operate in an unsafe manner. Note that all hand signals used during the exam will be in accordance with OSHA's standard method hand signals. Pre-operational shift inspection. The first part of the practical exam will be an evaluation of your ability to identify elements critical to a crane's pre-operational shift inspection. The examiner will ask you to describe how you would inspect five different areas related to the machine. You will have approximately one minute per item. Pre-test familiarization period. You will be allowed 15 minutes to familiarize yourself with the crane and to examine anything on it that you feel is necessary to operate it comfortably. You are allowed to get the feel of the controls and are permitted to run the crane through its functions. The brakes and other devices have been set according to the crane manufacturer's recommendations. You may not interfere with the test course, attempt to lift the test weight, or shadow the corridor. You must finish the pre-test familiarization period with the hook under control in the start circle in preparation for task 1. The examiner will notify you when there are 10, 5, and 1 minutes remaining. If you are ready before the full 15 minutes have passed, you may indicate this to the examiner. If, at the end of the pre-test familiarization period, you feel you are not ready to take the exam, you should notify the examiner. You will have disqualified yourself from taking the exam at this time, and you will be required to sign to that effect on the candidate score sheet. If you are using a remote control, you are required to stay inside the designated area while operating the crane during the exam. At no time during the familiarization period or test should you walk or stand underneath the test weight. Walking or standing underneath the test weight is considered an unsafe act and the examiner is required to stop the test. If your time during any of the tasks exceeds more than twice the optimum time, the examiner may ask you to stop and move on to the next task. Task 1 Load hook and chain in stop circle. Optimum time for this task is 1 minute 30 seconds. 
At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, raise the chain at least 10 feet off the ground to clear all obstacles and personnel. Bring the chain from its starting position at the start circle over to the stop circle and land the chain fully inside the circle. Once the chain makes contact with the ground inside the circle, do not lift the chain off the ground. Avoid contacting anything but the ground inside the stop circle. Once the chain is under control inside the circle, the examiner will give you a stop signal and timing will end. Points will be deducted for the following. Dragging or contact of the chain outside of the circle. Hook or block touching the ground, either inside or outside of the circle. Hook, block, or chain contacting any part of the course or crane. Lifting the chain off the ground after initial contact with the ground inside the circle. Exceeding optimum time. Pre-task familiarization period with test weight. At the examiner's indication, bring the load hook over to the test weight. The examiner or proctor will remove the chain and attach the test weight. You are allowed to bring the test weight to the designated area where you can get the feel of the load, test the brakes, and so on before beginning the next task. Do not swing the load outside of the designated area or shadow the load circle or zigzag corridor. You will be allowed five minutes for this pre-task familiarization period. At the end of this period, you must have placed the test weight on the ground in the test weight circle with the rigging taut. The examiner will notify you when there is one minute remaining. If you are ready before the full five minutes have passed, you may indicate this to the examiner. Task 2. Test weight in load circle. Optimum time, 4 minutes. At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, bring the test weight from the test weight circle to the load circle. Place the test weight on the ground completely within the load circle. Once the test weight is on the ground, completely inside the circle, the examiner will give you a stop, hoist, and swing signal. This will indicate that you should then pick the test weight up and move it over to the start circle. Timing will end when you have placed the test weight on the ground completely inside the start circle, and the examiner has given you a stop signal. If the examiner has not given you a stop signal, this will indicate that the test weight is not fully within the circle and the task continues to be timed. Avoid touching or knocking over any part of the PVC barriers or touching the ground outside of the circle with the test weight. Points will be deducted for the following. Knocking ball off pole. Knocking pole over. Test weight touching the ground outside of the circle. Exceeding optimum time. Task 3. Zigzag Corridor. This task is divided into two separate subtasks, 3A and 3B. Task 3A requires you to negotiate the corridor in a forward direction. Task 3B requires you to negotiate the corridor in a reverse direction. The optimum time for each individual subtask is 3 minutes. At the examiner's indication to start, at which point timing will begin, Lift the test weight and guide it through the corridor. Avoid touching or knocking over any part of the PVC barriers, touching the ground with the test weight, or raising it so high that the chain leaves the ground. Timing will end when you have placed the test weight on the ground inside the stop circle 
and the examiner has given you a stop signal. If the examiner has not given you a stop signal, this will indicate that the test weight is not fully within the circle and the task continues to be timed. For this task, the chains do not need to be fully inside the circle. Points will be deducted for the following. Knocking ball off pole. Moving pole base off the line. Knocking pole over. Chains leaving the ground. Passing poles with the chains off the ground. Test weight touching the ground. Circumventing the course. Exceeding optimum time. Once task 3A is complete, the practical examiner will provide you an opportunity to reposition the block over the test weight, but you will not be permitted to pick the test weight back up prior to the start of task 3B. For task 3B, at the examiner's indication to start at which point timing will begin, lift the test weight from the stop circle and travel back through the corridor in a reverse direction. Remember to avoid touching or knocking over any part of the PVC barriers, touching the ground with the test weight, or raising it so high that the chain leaves the ground. Remember also that all point deductions listed in Task 3A will apply during Task 3B. Timing will end when you have placed the test weight completely inside the test weight circle and the examiner has given you a stop signal. Task 4. Safe Securing Procedures This task is intended to evaluate your knowledge of the proper procedures required to safely secure the crane. The examiner will ask you to describe the procedures you would apply to the crane in preparation to leave the crane. After the exam, Please do not ask the examiner to review your score sheet or discuss your performance, because they are not permitted to do so. Your results will be sent to you within 12 business days after receiving your score sheet. If you have completed all your tests, you must leave the test site. Otherwise, you should return to the pre-test briefing area. Thank you for participating in the NCCCO Tower Crane Operator Certification Program.